we cleared 15. Two have not been cleared. Now, don't ask me those who have been cleared and those who have not been cleared, because I won't tell you. We also want to assure all members of the APC that uh, we want a plea and prayer. A lot of presidential aspirants have come to you for endorsement. Some even say you have asked them to run while you watch. What kind of person would you like to hand over to? The person that Nigerians uh, elect. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That is from Mr. President. Two aspirants did not see the political promised land as the Senator David Mack led PDP Presidential Aspirants Screening Committee cut short their journey. Names still withheld. For the APC, we will be thorough and unbiased in the screening process. Then for Mr. President, when you are done with the screening and your party finds you fit as a candidate, then face the electorate to claim your mandate, because I am not a kingmaker. That is the position of President Buhari, welcoming you to a political update. Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, you remember? The former chief of air staff, currently Nigerian ambassador to the Republic of Chad. But probably what you have not known about him is that he is now an active politician, vying to be the governor of Bauchi State. What informed his decision is my focus today on political update, so stay back. Let's begin from the presidential villa because President Muhammadu Buhari has formally thrown his weight behind Abiodo Abayomi Oyebanji candidate of the APC for the forthcoming Ekiti governorship election, urging the people to rally around him in the greater interest of the state. This was when he granted audience to the party's candidate in the bill up to the election scheduled for June this year. The president was very happy, very hilarious, you know, in receiving the candidate and by the grace of God, governor to be uh, Kitty State. I'm humbled and I'm fired up by Mr. President's comments uh, when he received us today. And uh, I'm grateful to my party for the confidence reposing in me as a standard bearer of the APC. And I promise to lead from the front. More presidential, governorship, and legislative aspirants from all Progressives Congress APC have continued to pick up nomination and expression of interest forms. The National Organizing Secretary of the party, Suleiman Arugungu, has been stressing the commitment of the party to conduct each free primary elections to elect credible candidates ahead of 2023 polls. We also want to assure all members of the APC not only the aspirant, but all members who are going to uh, elect the aspirant, that uh, we want a plea and prayer. And to the PDP, the People's Democratic Party presidential screening panel has disqualified two out of the 17 presidential aspirants that appeared before it for screening. Chairman of the panel and former president of the Senate, David Mark, disclosed this at the end of the screening exercise in Abuja. We cleared 15. Two have not been cleared. Now, don't ask me those who have been cleared and those who have not been cleared, because I won't tell you. We haven't released the result to them. So the names are still not known. Former Chief of the Air Staff, Sadiq Abubakar, is now an active politician, vying to be the number one, occupy the number one seats in Bauchi State. Earlier today, I was with him at his Asukuro resident to know what informed his coming to politics. Discussions were quite intriguing. So let's get an excerpt of it. It's my pleasure to have you as a guest as Nigeria counts down to the 2023 elections. But uh, let's touch on a rather lighter note. 
Nigerians have been seeing you. Most of them probably saw you last with uh, the Air Force uniform. How do you feel removing the uniform and uh, wearing the mufti? <laughs> well, uh, thank you so much for, for having me. Uh, I want to say that uh, it is really exciting to be back home to our communities. Uh, of course, certainly haven't been in the system for almost 42 years. Uh, leaving that system to another system uh, sometimes tends to uh, create this feeling that uh, you are now living in an environment that you are used to. But I can tell you that on the whole, I have always been a people's person. So it has been very easy for, for one to really switch over from the military life to a civil life. And I think so far so good. We have tried as much as possible to blend in and uh, to work with our communities very closely. Uh, like I said, I'm somebody that has actually been very passionate about human beings. So uh, leaving the uniform and going back to my roots, to my state was not very difficult. Uh, because even while in the uniform, we have always been in touch with our communities. So I think so far so good. Okay, after the uniform, uh, you are now a diplomat. Currently the Nigerian ambassador to the Republic of Chad. How is life being a diplomat? It's a very exciting uh, job and I want to thank Mr. President for giving us this exceptional privilege of serving as ambassador in uh, Chad and other countries for my other colleagues. All I can tell you is that uh, what we are doing is we are simply working very closely with our governments, host governments, to see how we can promote the interests of Nigeria, how we can promote uh, what we believe is very important uh, relationship between the two countries. Chad is a very important partner for us. It's our immediate neighbor, we are very concerned. We want to see how we can support Chad and how Chad can support us. And in the last um, year and so, year and a half or thereabout, we have tried to work very closely with the Chadian authorities, particularly to improve the issue of formal trade between Nigeria and Chad. We have worked together with the Chadian Chambers of Commerce we have also worked together with the Nigerian Chambers of Commerce here, as well as the Nigerian Investment and Promotion Commission. And the whole idea is to see how Nigeria, how we can improve formal trade between Nigeria and Chad. Uh, we've been able to bring in uh, a delegation of business men and women from Chad to Nigeria, to Nigerian Investment and Promotion Commission, where we had a very wonderful uh, interaction. And the whole idea, like I said, is to see how can we promote formal trade. Sure. Okay, until you picked the form, the expression of interest and that of uh, nomination, mm -hmm. uh, quite a huge money, 50 million, I guess, as APC. Uh, so with all these achievements already in progress in Chad, you still decided to come to contest as governor in Bauchi State. What were some of those issues you consider that you must be the governor of uh, Bauchi State that you want to share with Nigerians? Thank you very much. Um, I am a traditional person, let me put it that way. I'm somebody, like I said at the beginning of the program, that is very closely linked to his people. And uh, I have seen a functional system that gave me the opportunity and uh, to really go to school, to have what it requires to really uh, come up, join the Air Force, and by the special grace of God, become the, became the chief of the air staff. Uh, my passion for people to really have opportunity to live their dreams is one of the uh, major motivating factors that made me to go into politics. In the 70s, we had schools, functional school system, where you go to secondary school and you are provided with virtually everything. You are provided with uniforms, provided with textbooks, you are provided with uh, exercise books, 
you have good food in the dining, you have good teachers. These were the issues that were addressed that time that gave people such as us the opportunity to really uh, be what we ended up becoming in the service. And I am seeing that the situation on ground, uh, there is much that we need to do in order to just catch up with what was happening in the past uh, in terms of having opportunities. Every child must have the opportunity to really go to school. This is very fundamental because education is the bedrock of every society. Without education, you can't achieve anything. In fact, as a matter of fact, if you want to destroy a community, you don't need to go there with rifles. All you need to do is block education, make sure that they don't go to school. Uh, because if you do that with time, you know, they will end up killing themselves. Education, 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 very important. Uh, we have about somewhere in the region of 1.1 to 1.4 million out of school children in Bauchi State. This is very, very appalling in my opinion. And whatever it is that I and others can do to ensure that those children are back to their classes, back to classrooms, is very, very important if we want society to really advance. Because even the security and insecurity issues that we have, uh, I think one time U.S. Secretary of State, Mark Namara, once observed that, you know, security and development are two sides of the same coin. So, and development, you cannot have development without education. 21st century is a knowledge-driven century. You cannot allow a situation where so many people do not have the opportunity to go to school. Okay, so let me cut in here. It won't be an easy ride for you because you have a PDP government in place in Bauchi State, mm. in the person of Bala. How formidable are your structures in the state that you think you can probably take over from a state that is being ruled by another political party and not on the state, the party you are coming from? I think what is important is for the people to understand what your objective. Bauchi State is a very, very highly developed state in terms of politics. People know what, what they want. Okay, and that is why I'm saying that the fundamental issues we should be bothered about is first and foremost how to eradicate poverty. You cannot eradicate poverty without addressing education. You must have a functional system in terms of infrastructure, and you must also have a functional system in terms of quality teachers. These are the fundamentals that we need to address, irrespective of what is on ground. And once you key into what the people are interested in, what is on ground does not really matter. Apart from education, of course, there are other sectors. You know, you, you look at the health sector. If you look at the health sector, uh, some of the, um, the figures you see there is, are figures that are, are, are really appalling. You are talking of 1,549 women dying for every 100,000 birth. You are talking about children, uh, 161 children out of every 1,000 that cannot celebrate their fifth birthday. You are talking of infant mortality rates that is one of the highest. These are the concerns of people. And if you go also to the issue of uh, youth empowerment, which is also very, very important, I have seen it in the Air Force. We had a program of empowering Barak boys and girls where with the support of uh, the Nigerian Air Force Officers Wives Association where we empowered over, over, over 3,000 uh, Barak boys and girls. So the youths are full of energy. Unless you channel that energy to something that is productive, that will support not only the youths but will support society. The youths are bound to channel the energy to a wrong side. Okay, you have a diploma in uh, public administration. Yeah. You also have a BSc in political science, and you also have MSc in strategic studies. 
that placed you as a good administrator, if I may say. But uh, being your many years in service has really infiltrated as well, mm. as it were. So coming from an environment where obey before complain is the slogan, and you are now going into a barrack, a place where complain before obeying, are you coping with the politicians? Because the midnight meetings are very important. I agree with you. Um, the military is a regimental system where people function, take commands and orders and so on. Unlike the political space where you have to look at the issues of consensus, dialogue, and, and, and looking at yeah, different interest groups and so on, and trying to accommodate as much as you can. I think it's very easy. For us in the military, we, are, we have been trained. I, I went to the National War College. Uh, I attended the last National War College course in Nigeria. It was after our set that it changed to National Defense College. So, and this, uh, uh, we have been to Anvos Command and Star College first uh, as a young officer, fly lieutenant. I've also, I went back again as a squadron leader to the Anvos Command and Star College. And these are uh, colleges that uh, uh, are not, the curriculum is not just about fighting. You know, it's not just about fighting. It's looking at the different, the linkages between policies. And that actually has properly positioned us. For me, I had the exceptional privilege of being a directing staff at the Armed Forces Command and Staff College, and also a directing staff at the National Defense College, where all these issues are critically looked at. How policies interact, whether it's defense, security, and other policies, how they work together in order to uh, propel society to where it's supposed to go to. So I think it's not it's not it's not um, it's not a major it's not a major problem. All all we need to do is to fall back on that knowledge and that experience. Forty two years of experience. So uh, and that was what we did. I, I I just realized that having gathered all this experience and knowledge for over forty two years, it will be very bad on my part to just sit on the fence when I can see clearly that there are things that are happening that I can add value to if I'm given the opportunity. Okay, so let's come to party politics. What do you think your party need to do better, especially at the state level, APC, so that uh, there won't be a divided house? What advice will you give to your party members? I think members? The, leadership, the leadership of the party at the state level and at the national level are doing extremely, uh, they are doing their best to ensure that everybody comes under one roof. They are reconciling people, people that are not happy. They are discussing those issues. The party leadership at the state uh, is equally doing extremely well. They are trying as much as possible to bring all uh, interested parties together, discuss areas of differences, and try to see how they can take, uh, we can all accept a common position that will be in the interest of the party. What we desire is to see how we can add value to our society, which is the most important thing. That is what politics is all about. It's all about ensuring that uh, you create an enabling environment where people can pursue their legitimate aspirations and goals, uh, you know, without any difficulty. That is what politics is all about, as far as I'm concerned. So, uh, to, to that extent, I will say that the state uh, APC chapter is doing very well. They are, they are working very closely with all of us, and we are also trying to see how do we put our heads together uh, in order to move our society forward. How do we put our heads together to ensure that irrespective of your social status, as a child, you have access to education? How do we put our heads together to ensure that girl-child education is taken very seriously? Because if you educate a woman, if you educate just one woman, in my opinion, is better than educating five, five men. Because the woman will grow educated, and she will also take care of her kids. She will make sure, they, you know, they go to school and they, they acquire the knowledge required to make them decent people, people that will contribute to the development of society. 
Okay, seeing you is like seeing security. That is the way the world sees you. Mm. Some, once they see you, they see Air Force, not before even Sadiq Abubakar. Mm. So, in that regard, what are you bringing to the table in Bauchi State if, for instance, elected as governor in terms of security? Because not is not in terms of the challenge we are facing in terms of insecurity. Well, like I said uh, at the beginning of the program, security and development are two sides of the same coin. Two sides of the, co uh, the same coin. Uh, at the federal level, the federal government is doing everything. I'm very, I'm very familiar with the efforts of Mr. President in terms of uh, acquisition of aircraft, supporting us to repair aircraft, grounded aircraft. Over about, about 20 aircraft were, were reactivated. And then, uh, and, 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 you know, in terms of acquiring, in terms of increasing the manpower disposition, at the federal level, all these things are happening. But one level that, or two levels that we need to really look at, uh, that, uh, that should be more concerned about the social dimension of security. The, uh, those levels are the state and the local government levels. Like I said, if you don't create an environment where people can go to school without any difficulty, you are creating a big insecurity issue, which might not manifest now, but will manifest in years to come. So the very foundation of security starts with addressing the social and economic dimension of security. And, and, and state governments, yes, the federal government is doing a lot also in that area in terms of provision of infrastructure, roads, rails, you know, uh, input in agriculture and all that policies that are coming out. But at the state level, we must have a very comprehensive, all-encompassing program. And then the issue of empowerment, the issue of making sure that you mobilize all resources that's available to you to have the money required to ensure that uh, people are able to go to school. I, I had the opportunity to go to school. That's why I'm talking to you today. Thank you very much, uh, former Chief of Air Staff and presently a governorship passport under the platform of the APC in Bauchi State. And we pray our next sitting will be one-on-one -on -one with the executive governor of Bauchi State. Thank you. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you so much. That was my earlier interview with uh, former Chief of Air Staff, Sadiq Abubakar, and Governorship Aspirant under the platform of the APC in Bauchi State. The Minister of Transportation, Chubiki Ruth Miyamichi, is on a nationwide tour, optimistic of getting the APC presidential ticket as a foot soldier of the President Muhammadu Buhari administration, he says Nigerians deserve a man who is firm in decision making to move the country forward at this period. He stated this while interacting with traditional rulers and APC members in Delta and River states. It was a carnival of sorts as the people of Delta and Rivers states welcomed the Minister of Transportation, Hubike Rotimi Amechi, accompanied by friends and party stalwarts, the colorful array of chiefs and the Air East, who are the female title holders at the Asaba of Asaba Palace, represent honor to the Minister. In an exacted mood, the minister lauded the effort of President Mohamed Buhari at executing infrastructural projects despite glaring challenges, promising to advance in this achievement. So you and I have a responsibility to ensure that our people are able to do because the moment we complete the Lagos Calabar Rail, we shall not complete the second Niger Bridge, and possibly complete the sea port of Things will change. He says the country deserves a committed and dogged person at this point in time, urging Nigerians to begin to probe more on the achievement of each presidential aspirant. I don't need anybody to talk to you. What you need to do is what? Tell them how will your government change my life? You will see hope is where around the corner. Thank you for this effort. Congratulations. And we pray that you have opportunity to help this country more in the years that come. The next level for you, it seems, to be the stars. The minister interacted with APC members in Delta and River states. On that note, we end today's edition, but let's tell you that the UN Secretary General is already in Nigeria. You remember, this is his first maiden visit, rather the maiden visit 
to Nigeria, and that really excites all Nigerians. So NTA will bring you blow by blow account of his activities as the events unfold. We are told currently he's in Medugri already. So also remember, collection of PVCs, continuous voters registration ends on the 30th of June. So please take the opportunity that is still left about 58 or seven days. So my name is Mie Ogede, your anchor. Hope to see you again on Friday with another promising edition. Thank you.